Hi, YouTubers. This is Mary once again. Quick video. I um, I'm trying to hold my head a different way where the reflection didn't get on the, the glasses, but I don't know. I got all dolled up. <laughs> my my nieces wanted me to go to her her baby's volleyball game. It's a, the um, last game of the season. And with the um, the schools that got destroyed here in Dallas, they're having, they're having to combine girls on different teams, but they're all going to meet up at this one gymnasium tonight. And it's going to be a lot of family members there, and I, I'm going to have fun. But I, I don't drive at night because of a cataract, but I had this one operated on, I think it was uh, Wednesday. Yeah, it'd be a week tomorrow. And honey, um, if I say stuff I thought was white is beige, it's the difference in night and day. And I don't even know how long, I told my head down, how long I've been seeing the wrong thing. And, and I just got a spiritual meaning out of that because I remember one time, uh, pretty a while ago, a decorator and I, she was telling me what stripe she wanted to be centered, and she would always say the brown stripe. No, she would always say the green stripe. I said, oh, you mean, you mean the brown stripe? So we went back and forth with the colors, and I wasn't seeing the same colors that she saw. So I guess the cataracts were, ooh, i got to take this hat off. Cataracts were... Um, messing up um back during that time because I didn't I didn't see things like they were supposed to be. But man and I'm gonna get this I done ASAP because what you think you see you're not seeing it. It's the lens is filtered. It's like the difference between having a one hundred watt bulb in the room compared to a 40 watt. That's just how the difference. It's like, wow. And even when I play my little games, I play a lot of solitaire. <laughs> With this eye, one half of the board is just bright white, and then the other half is beige. And I said, man, I can't believe that uh, my eyes were that dim. But I, I'm glad that I went ahead and done it. And it, it wasn't bad at all. It, it, it's just amazing what medicine can do. But um, I put on this pink, you know, just for breast cancer. And I just wish that women in this uh, YouTube sector, or women all over the world, especially women who have, um, I don't know, the narcissistic behavior and I look better than you do, my are prettier than yours, yours are floppy, and you know, comparing breasts, and I just, I, I, I wish we would stop that, because regardless of if your breasts are sagging, or if they're big, we want healthy, healthy breasts, that's what we want, regardless, because it, it's, it's, we need to encourage each other to get the mammogram. And even the men. Men, I don't know, they don't do mammograms, but the self-examination. You know, if you have your man, then just uh, examine him. And if you feel any lumps or one uh, one breast is larger than the other, have him to go check. Because I regularly, <laughs> I'm a touchy-feely person, and I regularly check my man. Because I, I was, a, as they say, a... Uh, uh, a bitty baby, so that's my forte. But I, I came on here to encourage the women to encourage each other, and let's not talk about each other's breasts and uh, what's sagging and what's fail because everything is gonna fall eventually. Gravity, gravity takes a hold, takes a hold. Your teeth and everything falls out. So, but um. I just want us to do better. And you can't do better until you know better. And 
the thing about we always say uh, God forgive us for our sins. The sin is ignorance. And I guess that's why the Bible say my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we have to really educate ourselves. And speaking of educating, I want to show you guys, you know, a couple of months ago, I told you all I was helping a friend, a couple of friends, but this friend in particular, to write their book. And he's going to launch this book in uh, the 1st of November, but I want to show it to you, the copy of it. It's called Powerful Quotes. And this book takes different quotes and sayings from different books that he has read. And to me, the words in this book is a shortcut to enlightenment. I mean, you could take the Bible away and you can go to seminary and get all the study, the con uh, conquered uh versions and to help you and to understand but you don't need a dictionary for this book it's, it's just, just amazing the words that he collected and i'm just going to tell you some of the chapters the table contents the first chapter is the concept of god and it talks about our concept and how we came up with god whether it be Muhammad, no, it's not Muhammad, Allah, Jehovah, or whatever God you call, but the concept of it. The second chapter talks about universal laws and freedom. And these laws stand true. I don't know, I guess the universal God made these laws, the law of return, the law of average, the law of gravity, all these laws, they stand true. And man has uh, figured this out and we can't break these laws. The law of karma is no way. We can break the man-made laws, but if you break the universal laws, you will suffer the consequence. And I guess it's a, uh, the karma police or the universe the universal police, but they come and get you when you break these laws. The third chapter is, who is Jesus? That all, all these chapters are good. The fourth chapter, religion and the word of God. Chapter five, love and fear. So I have to move, <laughs> move my, the book so my good eye can see. Chapter 6 is Faith and Forgiveness. Chapter 7, Truth and Lies. Chapter 8, Knowledge and Ignorance. Chapter 9, We Are Spiritual Beings. Chapter 10, Positive and Negative Forces. Chapter 11, Becoming Whole. And Chapter 12, is healing words. But the, this book, I'm just going to show you how it's written. And I know Spirit was guiding me to set this up because when I first got it, he just gave me six notebooks with a lot of words just written down, just, just no order, no nothing. And what I did, I put all of this, everything I saw, I, I just typed it in a Word document. And it was a, a goulash of everything. And I said, God, I have no idea how to sort this. And I, I prayed because I, I got discouraged. And, and the Spirit began to speak to me as to how to separate this. And I'm going to show you how, is, how easy it is to read. Okay. Let's go to... Each chapter is set up like this, but let's look at this. Chapter 3, Who is Jesus? Let's see if you can see that. Okay, the beginning of the chapter has an introduction as to who Jesus is. And then when you get into it, it takes little quotes. 
asterisks by it. So it's easy. To, I call them little bite-sized nuggets. So you can just take it a little bit down and it's no plot. It's no uh, villain or heroin in it. It's, it's just easy. And it said, now let me read one thing. Jesus should not be idolized, but his teachings should be followed. The next one says, Jesus showed us the way. He is the pattern. Jesus came to reveal the nature of God, not to be God. Jesus left behind many riddles and still leave men baffled. And it goes on and on. So you have this whole chapter about Jesus. And uh, the price of this book is $14. But you do get 230 pages of quotes and things. And it, it, this gives you light. Let me let me read you the back page. And we'll... Because we'll, I'll probably come back after, <laughs> after this game is over and put on my pajamas. Okay, this the back page says this book is a collection of words from the Bible and other books in the author's library. The words in this book are written to remind the reader of the wisdom and knowledge that has already been shared with them. Okay. They have this stripe in here. So you can't it's a sample, so I'm gonna have to skip that. It says the author wants to stir the reader's mind by way of remembrance. And reading this book, you will find wisdom, knowledge, and strength to be your best you can be in the days and times we are living in. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is the book, Powerful Quotes. So we'll, I'll do some more prom prom promotions on this book around the first of the month and uh, it's going to be available on Amazon but I tell everybody a book is inside all of us and we all have a word the spirit didn't stop speaking to man in Revelation I just don't believe that the book of Revelation is not the end of God's word so ooh, it's hot I'm having a hot flash so I encourage everybody, even if you don't um, type in Word, Mr. Tolliver, he wrote this down with a pen. So write, whatever you do, write and see what God, the universe is saying to you and to others. Because you can bless other people with your words. The book I wrote, Going Home Another Way, helped so many people. It, it was just amazing. With just the little things that was revealed to me in that book. The part about the triggers uh, for me being on drugs. The trigger about me straightening my hair and putting the spritz on it. And putting that hot curling iron on it. The sound that it made. That pssst, That sound. And I had been straightening my hair. Curling my hair. And then run into the dope house, the dope dealer. And when I decided I'm going to try to get off crack, that the spirit made me aware of the sounds. And I said, God, that is a trigger. Because it sounds just like the pipe when it's fired up. And I wrote that in the book. And not... <laughs> You know, men, uh, male crack addicts, because they don't curl their hair. And the spritz sound, so that, that didn't relate to them. But there were women who said that that is so true. And after I, after I made them aware of that, they had to stop using the spritz on their hair. And a reporter for... A major newspaper here, Dallas Morning News. She heard my story and she did a skit and it's called The Sound. And she does it uh, herself and then sometimes 
actors, actors will do it. And it's not a dry eye in the house when she does that skit. It's psst, that sound. And it's, it's a beautiful, and it's my story, but it brings me to tears every time I see a woman on stage doing it. But I said that to talk about words, God has not stopped speaking to us. And he speaks to us daily, even audible. We hear his voice. And then when you write it down, you present it to the rest of the world. So they can hear your story, what God is saying to you. Because I get inspired by reading and movies and other things. So if you have a story, you Amazon, I'm doing a prop from Amazon for Amazon. It's amazing that you can write a book and spend less than $25. Because you after you do it, you, you order a proof to go back and forth and see if you like it. And each proof that I did didn't cost me but $3.76. And you have to pay the shipping. But it's unbelievable. And I had a publisher to do one of my books. And I think they charged me, I want to say, uh, $6,000. $6,000 compared to $5? That's unbelievable. So when I, I realized that, I said, well, let me write some more. So I wrote about eight books because I was saying Amazon is going to go up on their prices because this is ridiculous. And I started writing in 2001. I encouraged, okay, one, two, three. I've had four people, including Harold, it's four, four people to write a book. And I showed them how to do the layout because that's what's important. People don't... Uh, tell you about the margins and the layout and the gutters and what Amazon requires. Now, if you don't know how to do this and you go to Amazon for help, that's when the price goes up. But I learned, I learned, and I learned. And the key to it is remember, and I stopped writing a while and I had to remember, and I did keep notes as how to set your margins and and what's acceptable to Amazon. And even you have to do your own page numbering. You are actually writing your own book. But it is so much fun. And there's nothing like seeing your words in print. Even if you had to do your family history, a family tree, it's something that your family will have forever because you get an ISBN number and everything. Library of Congress, you are an author, a published author. So uh, props off to Amazon, uh, props out to Amazon. And I'm looking at this clock. I don't know why. I I just think I'm gonna run out of town time, but I'm gonna close out. And when I come back from this game, I'll uh, be relaxed and put on my uh, my pajamas. Cause you know I don't think I'm gonna put that hat on. Cause yeah, these dreads hold water, man. They, ooh, eh. back my neck, neck is just soaking wet. But I am wearing pink. They asked us all to wear pink, so I got on pink. But remember, let's not talk about each other's breasts, okay? I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Bye bye.